the other day, my wife was uh, talking, to, talking to me, and she said, um, before you present, people will quickly figure out who you work for. And I asked her, uh, why? Uh, she said, uh, you're not using Mac. Um, so uh, uh, I uh, pr proudly announced that I do work for Microsoft. Uh, I'm a data scientist, data scientist there. Um, so uh, earlier this afternoon, there was, a, there was a presentation. There was a slide where you look at who's using R uh, by industry. So if you remember, financial industry is one, one of the industries that's not using R a lot. And like it or not, uh, that's where the money, money is. So, uh, <laughs> so, so what's going on? Uh, um, at Microsoft, we had a chance to work with some financial companies using R. And today, I'm going to share some insights from those engagements. OK, how do I use this? OK, uh, how uh, can somebody help me using, use this tool? So I'm, a, I'm from Microsoft. I don't know how to use this. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, um, okay so, uh, so the way the talk is structured, I'll start with two engagements. Uh, for each engagement, we look at what were the requests from customers, what were the challenges, and how we address those. And finally, I'll make some general observations. Uh, the first customer is, uh, is the international bank. They currently use SaaS for all of their analytics work. No surprise there. Uh, they, uh, at the beginning of the engagement, they shared with us a SaaS script, and they asked us to replicate that work in R and Microsoft R. And they also shared with us uh, two small data sets. Uh, for security reasons, uh, all the variables were masked in this data set. So the first lesson we learned is that uh, R should provide better support for data manipulations. Uh, to the top left here, there's a small data set where uh, you can see there's a card ID column, there's a C date column, there's a report date column. So two dates. What we want to do is to calculate the difference in month between these two dates. Simple. Right? So for, uh, for example, for the first row, uh, the difference between June the 10th and September the 1st, that should be three months. Second row, difference between uh, July the 15th and September the 1st, that should be two months. Uh, so in, in SAS, there is this function called INTCK. It calculates the difference between these two days. Uh, so when we started look, with R, we looked into the diff time function. And, and if you look at units here, there's uh, seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks. The only one missing there is one we, are, we want to use. Um, so what we had to do is we had to write this custom function uh, just to calculate the difference between the two days in number of months. In number of months. And uh, of course, here, R works fine when the size of data fits in your memory. Uh, but if you think about, uh, for example, a credit card co company, they have lots and lots of uh, information for each month uh, if, over, over, over time. So they want to, they have, the data doesn't necessarily fit in your memory. How do, we, how do you work with it? So in our case, we use uh, Microsoft R. And uh, with Microsoft R, we can simply reuse this R function uh, within the um, Rx data step function in Microsoft R. So that way we were able to work with data even if the data does not fit in your memory. Now, uh, a lot of you might think, think that this is really trivial, right? Um, but if you think about how frequent this calculation is being used in this industry, it's something worth supporting. The second lesson we learned is that in this kind of work, knowledge in both languages uh, is necessary. So this example illustrates the kind of mistakes one can make if there is a lack of knowledge in both. So here, what, we are, what this code is trying to do is to convert the SAS code to the left to the R code to the right. Uh, so, the, so what's going on here is first is converts the code block D as in dog into um, block number one in R, and then it converts uh, code block number E to the left to block number two in R. What's, as you can see, this transversion, uh, conversion is doing nothing about code blocks A, B, and C in SAS code. But for SAS users, we know those, those parts are critical. If you are not doing anything about those, those, those parts, this is, this is not doing, doing it right. And we'll see, we'll, we'll look at why that's, that's wrong. 
And the other thing is in this conversion, the R code, there's, you can see there's a loop, uh, number three there. So it's looping through all the rows in the data set. And the reason this is being done is because in SAS, we are trying to replicate the SAS code. In SAS code, there's uh, uh, this inherent loop concept. So it be behind the scenes, it's trying to process data one row at a time. Now, our users, as we as our users, we know that doing this kind of data manipulation, data manipulation is not best, best practice. We shouldn't be processing data one row at a time, right? Uh, but regardless of uh, that part, this conversion is wrong. Now let's look at why this is wrong. So we, here to the left, we have the SAS code we just looked at, and the, to the bottom left, there is a small data set. In this data set, we have uh, three columns, card ID, expense, and month. We have two cards. For each card, uh, card ID and one and two. For each card, there are three rows, which correspond to the uh, expense information over three months. Um, here to the top right, there is a graph showing how this data set is being processed by SAS. So at the beginning, at row number one, uh, it assigns some uh, missing values to three new variables, expense one, expense two, and expense three. And then there's cool block D as in dog. What it does it, is, is that it assigns a value to a variable. The value is the value for expense column, and the variable depends on the value of month. Here, the value of month is three, so it assigns a value to the variable expense three. So in the end, what we get is we assign 100 to the variable expense three. And then it moves onto the second, it starts moved onto the second row. In the second row, uh, because of code block B as in boy to the left, this code tells SAS to remember the information from, from the previous row to, this, to, the, to the current row. So because of that, at uh, the beginning we have the expense one and expense two missing, and then expense three has a value of 100. And then code block D as in dog would assign uh, uh, 50 to expense two because the value of expense is 50 and the value of uh, month is two. And then it comes onto row number three, it was, does the same thing, it remembers the information from the previous row, and then code block D as in dog would assign 70 to expense one because the value of expense is 70, and the value of month is one. And now, this is the last time that this card ID one appears in this data set, so this data set gets exported to a new data set because of the code block E to the left. And then it restarts the same process for uh, card ID number two. And at the end of this process, what we get is a table that looks like the one to the bottom right. So for card ID one, we have three um, values, expense one, expense two, and expense three. And card ID uh, two similarly has three, uh, column, three col columns, expense one, expense two, two, and expense three. Okay, so several observations from this example. First, this is really straightforward uh, transformation in R and Microsoft R. Um, so in R, we can use, there are different options. We can use the reshape function. We can use the date.table packages um, DC decast function. Um, and then in Microsoft R, similarly, we have uh, this decast XDF function, which uh, the, the benefit there is that uh, if you have a, a large data set that doesn't fit your memory, you can use this Microsoft R function to work with it. The second observation is that we just learned that SAS processes data row by row. So this allows it to work with data of all sizes. And R, on the other hand, works all the rows at the same time. So it has to read all your data into the memory. And you can, as you can imagine, if the size of data exceeds your memory limit, that's going to be a problem. Um, and Microsoft R here allowed us to overcome that limit. Uh, so uh, if, if, the, if there's a mechanism here behind the scenes, Microsoft R knows how to address uh, work with, how to work with data, if, even if the data size is too big. Now, finally, I want to point out that in this case, having some business knowledge uh, turned out to be helpful um, because in our example, we, uh, we have a small data set, we know the variables' names, but in, at the beginning of our engagement, all the variables were masked. So we didn't really know what was go what's going on, like what those variables stand for. And fortunately, we have some prior business knowledge in this, in this area, and that turned out to be very helpful. The second uh, customer is a foreign bank. They currently use SAS. 
uh, the, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in this engagement, they want to know how certain SaaS operations can be completed in R and Microsoft R. And they also want to compare the speed between SaaS and R and Microsoft R. Uh, here are some of the functions that the uh, asked us to look into. Uh, so there's a SAS first statement, SAS last statement. For these first two, there are different R and Microsoft R options uh, depending on the context. And then some other functions they ask, ask us to look into include the SAS compress function, SAS stream function, uh, SAS NTNX function. Uh, so for these functions, uh, we were able to find R counterparts, for example, for the SAS compress function, it's really a, you just use R's GSAP function. For uh, SAS trim function, we use the R's trim WS function. And uh, for the SAS NTNX function, which is uh, an operation on dates, we use some of the functions from the lubricated package. Now, uh, again, uh, this is OK if the size of data fits in the, in the memory. Uh, however, if you think about like what's going to happen if you have a large data set, that does not fit in your memory. Well, fortunately, here we were, we were able to reuse this R function, these R functions in Microsoft R. And there's uh, again we use Arc data step function. We call that uh, we were able to reuse these R functions. So there's a, a very, it's a learning curve is really shallow. So it's, it's, if it's, uh, if you're R user, you you'll be easily you can easily pick it pick Microsoft R up. Finally, I want to uh, make an uh, observation about uh, operationalization. Uh, so the, typically, the tasks involve including uh, different areas, include, uh, for example, you need to, data scientists need to document their models. Um, they need to describe how the models should be, uh, uh, should be calculated, how the values should be calculated. And then they need to work with IT teams, answer, answer their questions, um, uh, to make sure that uh, under the, uh, the IT team understand the requirements. Uh, finally, after the IT teams implement the models, uh, we need to test make, and make sure it was implemented correctly. And th there, are several, there are several challenges here. Uh, first, it's time consuming. Uh, both models and IT teams need to spend a lot of time making sure they understand each other. Um, it's error prone, so uh, both teams need to uh, double check and make sure they're doing it correctly. Uh, finally, it is a challenge for complex models. Uh, if you have a GP, GBM model, gradient boosting machines, how can you tell your IT team to implement that model? Right? Uh, it's, it's a challenge. For simple models like linear regression, logistic regression, you can write out the formula, the IT team knows how to, how to implement that. Uh, but for, uh, for a lot of, like tons of trees, it's, it's unrealistic to ask them to, to do that for you. Now, these challenges lead to some opportunities. So for example, it would be nice if you can make it easy to publish models. Uh, uh, maybe allow data scientists to publish models uh, from R with a few lines of code. Um, it would be nice if you can support different consumption modes because in practice, um, all the production systems are written in some languages, languages different from R, for, for example, Java. So it would be nice if you can support uh, consumption from those other languages. Uh, finally, it would be nice to allow for easy update because uh, again, in any in-production models, there's going to be a request for update. And it would be nice if you, you can, we don't have to repeat the whole complete process like documenting models working out with IT team. So how do we make it easy to update your models? Now this is where Microsoft R comes into play. So uh, here to the left, there's a graph showing how Microsoft R works. The center, there's a, uh, um, a Microsoft R server. And the, uh, at the top left, there's a data scientist, this data scientist, uh, develop the model, and then pub uh, after the model is developed, he or she publish, uh, can publish a service to the server. So to publish a service, you just use this publish service function. And then uh, another data scientist or may want to consume uh, this service. Uh, see, he or she can do that from Microsoft R. Uh, he just use the, it's a matter of using calling this function, get service function. And then, uh, of course, uh, in production, uh, the in production system can be uh, Built. Uh, uh, for example, the app developer can call this uh, service by issuing a REST API call. And of course, to the, the bottom left, there is uh, the administrator who manages the server itself. And to the right, there is some uh, sample code. So uh, just showing you how easy it is to, uh, to work with Microsoft R server in terms of deploying a web service. 
So first, you can load this MRS deploy library, and then you can log onto this server, provide your uh, server name, uh, username, and password. And then uh, to publish service, you just use this uh, uh, publish service function, where you provide the service name, uh, you provide the code, your model, your input arguments, and uh, your output arguments. And to call an existing web service, just provide, you use this get service function, you provide a service name. You can, you can use that service to score a new data set, for example. Uh, finally, if you want to update your web, web service, it's, you just use this update service function, where you provide the service name, provide the code, and your updated model. It's done. So the model has been updated. Now, previously I mentioned that when you work with large data sets, uh, you, uh, uh, we use Microsoft R. It turns out Microsoft R can run on different platforms. You can run locally on your local computer by itself. You can, it can also be run on SQL Server 2016. Um, um, and it also can be run on HD side. Now, uh, here this graph is showing some of the tools that Microsoft offers for big data and advanced analytics. Uh, but and I'm, I'm only highlighting the ones that's related to uh, Microsoft R. Uh, and again, and on HD side, actually, you can, uh, as you can imagine, uh, this is a Hadoop-like um, cluster, so you can run, for example, under the Spark computer context. Here's a summary of what we learned. So, uh, what do customers want uh, in this in this industry? First, uh, functions. They want, they want to know whether R uh, supports various types of data manipulations, and, and then does R offer different modeling options? Scalability and portability. Does R work with uh, data of all sizes with speed? As in our case, we were able to write Microsoft R code that runs both locally and on Spark. And if you want to change the computer context, it's a matter of calling this R set computer context, set computer context function. It's that simple. Finally, cost. We know, a lot of us know that SaaS is really expensive. Um, so for, from that perspective, R and Microsoft R can be better alternatives. Here are some of the resources I want to point out. First one is uh, uh, a blog post that I wrote. So this is targeted for data scientists who are familiar with R, but new to Microsoft R. It helps you understand what is really Microsoft R if you already have a background in R itself. The uh, second one is a link to Microsoft R documentation, documentation side where there's a lot of very useful, useful information about Microsoft R itself. And finally, um, based on our engagement, engagements, we uh, wrote a blog post uh, covering some more examples about SAS to R migration. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm from Microsoft. <laughs>